morning and waiting with this so, uh, Thank you very much for having me today. I think this is a very interesting topic for all of us to be talking about international health and regional politics. Uh, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, uh, my name is Sally, I'm a psychiatrist. I actually specialize in treating uh, uh, the rehab of cases of uh, uh, victims of uh, sexual abuse and torture, mainly by state. Uh, and that was before the 25th of January revolution, so that was at the time of uh, the most aggressive uh, regime of Mubarak. And unfortunately, it's still going on in Egypt. We still have torture, we still have sexual abuse in uh, state prisons and in police stations. Um, just, uh, um, as a socialist myself, I belong more to the uh, revolutionary socialist uh, ideology. Uh, we were in Egypt, we had uh, more or less for Mubarak, a lot of underground movements, as you say. Of course, uh, we were the people, in a sense, and of course, we were always uh, followed and interviewed and so forth. But we always uh, uh, continued living with uh, trying to revolt. Uh, for many years, we've been doing that, and uh, uh, I think that it was uh, maybe a case of torture in Egypt. Uh, uh, there was a very famous case uh, of Khaled Saeed. Uh, I follow this case uh, closely, and I'm the daughter of his uh, mother and uh, his sister, for whom he was put to death. Khaled Saeed maybe uh, brought uh, a lot of light to uh, regular Egyptians, and as we will speak a bit about was this a religious uprising or not? We don't understand that it is not uh, at all. Uh, but the uh, Helen Said case moved a lot of people, and instead of us being maybe 200 or 300 uh, protesters all from the floor of the stairs of the uh, journalist syndicate, uh, surrounded by thousands of state security police, there were only 200 there, uh, we became uh, uh, thousands and then millions in the streets. Uh, asking for dignity, which was the most important thing. We did not ask for an Islamic state, we didn't ask for dignity. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the details. Uh, also, I'm a uh, founder of the Egyptian Social Democratic Party. Uh, that's maybe the only thing that happened after the talking of Mubarak, that we got uh, uh, the liberty to start uh, foreign parties. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this also gives space to religious parties. Uh, to be formed and be formed quickly. And as they were organized from before, eight years before us, maybe, of course, we will saw uh, the results of the elections that we will be discussing as well. Uh, I continue to be working on the ground, uh, maybe through campaigns um, against the military council first, before they you know, start to be uh, in office now and uh, we have more seat. And we are continuing as well to work against Mr. Brother uh, in, uh, in Egypt, specifically because of their uh, violations and the hidden agenda we see, and then adopting maybe our uh, uprising to a different path, not the one that we are in the UK. So that's what we are doing. A very interesting thing was said that, that uh, the Arab Spring on the media here or in the international media is like that the most religious uh, news of the day. Uh, for us to be the most religious news is actually, uh, I don't want to say it, but I want to say it, it just uh, it makes us feel that uh, all these people who died, you know, died to just be perceived by the world in a very strange manner, whether it's the media trying to tell you that that's the case, or whether there are players who are now taking the scene, and uh, maybe uh, we are in the back scene now, or we are about to get the blood, really. And uh, it was not for the status of pain, and it was not to make religious news, but actually to make news of our religion. Uh, uh, maybe I'll show the red instead. I will say uh, red is the color of the heart and the blood on my left. So uh, I'm interested to talk a bit about uh, us. Occupy to liberate. Uh, that's uh, what we thought we can do. Uh, I'm very honored that uh, following the 25th of January 2011, all over the world I met people who started occupying to liberate. 
uh, we have to my movement just went from uh, place to place, uh, mainly uh, against capitalism, but also to the great and uh, uh, the claim what is ours. Occupy the space to claim what is yours. I think that was uh, the notion and the idea, and it still goes on. Uh, maybe uh, two days ago, I was uh, with uh, some Italian activists and artists, uh, we belong to Piazza Mario Lacca, which is a theatre that belong uh, that they occupied uh, more than a year ago. Uh, they occupied to liberate because this was an empty space that was abused actually. Uh, the Italian uh, culture and uh, ministry is not very supportive of artists. Uh, there is a lot of budget cutdowns, and artists don't feel that they can actually create and be uh, there and, 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 and evolve. Uh, so what they took and the vision, and uh, not take it to uh, destroy on the country they built, and it became a community inside the theater, uh, a full working theater uh, with uh, programs uh, and, and workshops. And after just taking over the wall, they started spreading to many other cities, so many campuses over Italy, and uh, we are also discussing with them. Uh, Alexandria and Cairo, that we would like to be occupied and soon to liberate. <laughs> so, this is the Hill Square, my home. Uh, the reason why we say home is because we never felt safe, or uh, maybe real Egyptians accepted this place. This is the place where there was the real Republic, this is the place where there was no religion in politics whatsoever. Uh, Come with me from Egypt where you speak religion all the time. Uh, a piece in Egypt before uh, going and uh, deciding that it's going to steal something big. We always say in Arabic, but then they are still, which is God protect me and save me. We have to mention God before we are doing that. And uh, that will tell you all about the difference between a religious state uh, or religious uh, uh, people and spiritual ones. Egyptians would say always we are very religious. But then you will see the most of the predictions within this religion as well. Uh, very easy to use the name of God. It's completely different to I suppose. Uh, uh, when we say, uh, as we said, the media and uh, portray this as a, a, a religious uh, uprising. Now we say that Tunisia and Egypt, they actually voted against capitalism to begin with. And I'm going to show you a, a video about that in a minute. Uh, Tunisia and Egypt also voted for dignity, social justice and freedom. And these were the chants in the streets, actually. No one was chanting Islamia, Islamia, no one was chanting we wanted a, a religious state. Everyone was saying a civil state is based on dignity, social justice and freedom for all. Tunisia and Egypt did not report for that. Islamic State, and that's really important for us too. Now, I would like to make a new video. I would like to show you a very small video. Uh, uh, this video was done by uh, as a group of uh, activists. Uh, uh, what happened after the topic of Mubarak the is that the military council took over before handing the country over to Muslim Brotherhood, so in this transitional period. And, and there were a lot of violations, a lot of killings that took place in the streets of Cairo from Tabun uh, Mubarak, so nothing could be ended. And uh, a lot of lies were told by the media. Uh, as Mubarak controlled the media, so did the military council, so do the Muslim Brotherhood at the moment. Uh, so as we felt that we were isolated maybe in Tahrir Square, and it was about time to come out and make every single neighborhood and tell people our story and let the Egyptian people see what is happening to the revolution from smearing and killing and imprisoning and the way they are just trying to finish this uh, hope. Uh, so we decided to launch uh, a campaign called Kazibun. Kazibun means a lie. And uh, it was starting to be a uh, military council. We were just six uh, activists that day on the 16th of December uh, when uh, we had the brutal attacks by the cabinet, uh, occupied cabinet uh, city. Uh, and uh, they lied about us totally. And we decided, okay, we're going to show the world or show at least our people what was going on. Uh, we decided to be uh, alternative media, we decided to be state uh, street media. Uh, so uh, we went quickly and done our videos because we took a lot of footage of what was going on. And we started as well uh, making movies that showed the lies. 
So we will get uh, someone from the city council or uh, the state, whatever, uh, uh, line, and then on the other side of the screen, uh, other side of the screen, we'll just show the truth. Without saying anything, we'll just show us in images and uh, visuals. Uh, after, uh, as I said, we were just six people after launching it. In less than one month, we had 500 screenings all over uh, Thailand. These are the registered ones. Uh, uh, places that screen, the places maybe the end of the world, first, places no one, uh, no one knows to. But everybody took to their maybe hearts to, to show people uh, the truth. Uh, we have 60,000. Protesters and activists involved in screenings, uh, 50 in a month, and now we are around uh, 100,000. Uh, people who consider themselves from the resident of the day. We were banned from appearing in any state media or talking to anyone, of course, because we were directly attacking the military. In my mind, speaking about the military or the army was a long time, so we can't cross that line. And it is to say that the military was a red line. We crossed that line, uh, we smashed that line and crushed it, and uh, we thought that after crossing it and crushing it, we would find these people tried uh, for all the violations of crimes against us, but unfortunately, most of the problem is that the same exit out, and we were discussing this, that we're having a lot of fun around traveling around the world, and what uh, everyone you know, has to just forget about the killings. So this uh, this uh, this movie is uh, one of the kinds of movies that uh, after the violations were over. So it was a bit to say or to bridge between the revolution itself and social justice. We wanted to tell people that it was all about social justice to remind them it was about social justice and about nothing else. So that's uh, the Today I'm talking more about Egypt and Tunisia because I can talk about Libya and Syria as well, but I think that will take a long time and we will not get the focus or the taste of, of the real thing, but we will go through Syria and Libya and the end. This is just after October of the United This man took to the street. On the 15th of January, we were watching for a and we were all He says the money is going to This is why we need to The first month of the revolution. We come to here, we come to here, we come to here, we come to here. His sister is saying here that Muhammad died uh, not for anything but for social justice. He died for the he died in a place where he was just a uh, passenger in the street. Nobody trusted him or understood him. Uh, every day, the big army from Tarat owned everything in Tunisia and uh, nothing to the people. Uh, this Tunisian man says this revolution is a revolution of bread and social justice and dignity. It is not the revolution of privilege, it is not the revolution of Islamism. It is against capitalism.
He says he just he works with his hand and he just wanted to have like this small shop, nothing more. He don't want anything more than just to eat. He says his sister is thinking about this being sick, yeah, and he's sitting beside him. He wanted to work because he wanted to carry her. Egyptian factories after the revolution. These are factories where they are many sold the revolution and people wanted to know how it We felt that we too need to do the same in the factories. Is there a relationship between the career and factory? This is a factory worker. Says, we, we get nothing, and for the nothing, I'm just going to kill myself to work. You just give me three hours of break, three hours I can sleep, so I can die. So I can go out to the streets and then. I have lived until the 25th of January, and I will not have hours in the hospital because I have to work. Those entering the hospital will lose their excuse. My blood and my body will flow on the ground. I have a wife and three children that are actually thinking of divorcing them all together. For eight months now, I'm out of work. I have no insurance or nothing as an Egyptian worker. And I thought this revolution would change that. Now, this is a factory that people decided to make a small tahrir inside of it, a small liberation uh, square. So they occupied it, and then as you see, it just... <laughs> so it is a lot of art. Because so they're always threatened by the police about their sitting, and by the military police. That's what's sitting inside of the factory. They say it is their small civil disobedience. Civil disobedience has started. People are against it. Religious men specifically are against it and are to say that this is against God or Allah that you need to follow the right by state. But it has started. It started in every factory, it started in the streets. All the money is outside Egypt. All of it belongs to the capitalists. All of the people who work for the people in London. What's wrong with all these people? All of them want just what? The right to life and live. I just want to be done with it, not to be done with the environment. Hunger eats me. If I don't go to work one day, I go to work on my own when I do. Egyptians are not scared anymore, we're going to speak out. Because there's any fascists, whether military or religious. Our will be the beginning of bread, freedom, social justice, and dignity. That here is not everywhere. Bread, freedom, social justice. Our right to life is it. If you don't feel that the state is going to give you your right, you vote and get your right. And um, that's why we try to keep on talking about social justice now.
because they are trying to convince us it's all about religion and it has nothing to do with religion. If uh, they go around saying Islam is the solution, when well, we are trying the solution now, show us what you can do. They said before it's the solution, it's as if it's going to feed you. Show me how religion can feed me, and then I'm all yours. That's the idea. And I think people believe in a bit because well, they said they're men of God. Why would they lie to us? And they, they, people thought they would deliver. Unfortunately, for 23 months and a half now, Muslim Brotherhood did not deliver in Egypt. Uh, Islam did not deliver in Tunisia. Uh, nor will they deliver anywhere. Uh, very easy using the word or the name of God, but very difficult fixing the underlying problems in Egypt. And uh, that's why you know, we feel this is transitional and we don't worry and we're not fearing that this is going to continue to be an uh, Islamist state. It is not an Islamist state, it's going to be a civil state and it's going to be ruled by those uh, who love it actually and uh, want to fix it. Um, I got to finish. <laughs> I think I know where to. Uh, to uh, so, what they say, uh, uh, Islamists were in the revolution. Uh, we always like to tell them when you were there, not on the you joined us, some of you joined us on the 28th of January. Uh, if you say that this was an Islamist revolution, how come we don't have not even one martyr belonging to an Islamist group? Uh, uh, this revolution uh, leaves uh, 1,200 of its best uh, youth, none of them belong to an Islamist uh, group, and we still have 1,000 missing, none of them belong to an Islamist group. Uh, so far, we have uh, thousands of military prisons. None of them belong to Islamic groups. And all the ones who are out from prison now are those who were imprisoned by Mubarak before. And Muslim Brotherhood use the power now so they can liberate their own. But still, our youth are still in there and smeared and still in prisons uh, for two years now. These are the cases of our revolution. The children that came out. The artists, because in the Hadid it was just like 18 days of continuous rebellion to art. We had the music, the graffiti, art everywhere, people sharing, even sketches we had. For once we had masses, mass and the Eastern uh, prayer at the same time. In Tahrir Square. So on Sundays, we used to have uh, Christians praying together with Muslims on the same stage for the martyrs, and this was the first time for a lot of people. I'm a host myself, so I'm a Christian, but uh, what was uh, amazing in Tahrir Square is that I never felt the difference. So uh, even before the 25th of January, I always felt I was a second uh, citizen, uh, but uh, only in Tahrir did I feel that. This place belonged to me, it was home, because uh, there were no differences in the one that was the only one thing. Okay. And then we have a man. Uh, these are not Jesus. This is uh, a hero, an Egyptian hero. He is uh, 21 years old. He just always looked like Jesus and reminded me of Jesus. Uh, we belong to uh, revolutionary socialists as well. And uh, if we say according to hierarchy or age or whatever, as I am practically uh, maybe uh, 13 years uh, older than Nina, so uh, I would be sort of a mentor. Um, Nina came from a very poor area in uh, Egypt, and uh, as a Christian, he was not very interested in working for the Coptic cause. We have Coptic activists in Egypt working to get the rights of the, of the cops, but that was not in his thing. He was more interested in working uh, for the poor. He was more interested in working under the umbrella of citizenship, rights for all. And that when we uh, get that rights, I think then the land might remain prosper. 
and the same they will get the rights as well because everyone was impressed. Uh, we now a march on the 25th of January and we met another march on the 28th of January coming out from the mosque and he was Christian. So, uh, and it was a very good march uh, at the end of the Tahrir. Uh, Mina was injured in Tahrir on the 28th of uh, January. And he was injured again on the, on the 2nd of February, and that's the very famous Kamen battle in the land, which was a, a, a very funny decided thing. Having camels and horses just entering Tahrir Square with swords, and managing to kill 55 people just with their swords, really uh, fighting, uh, uh, fighting modern thoughts uh, and ideas and progressive values. With source that were going to maybe thousand years ago. And uh, he was injured then as well, and had another operation. Uh, like us, after the top of the bar, and uh, we were going to continue to work. We have continued to be in the street, uh, in cities, and uh, we tried to push for constitution first. And Muslim brothers tried to push for election with the constitution, uh, because they just wanted to. Parliament and they were ready for the power. Uh, but we wanted to put the right. How can we get a job without a job description first of all? How can we not have a contract that might be put together before we start building? Uh, so this was actually on at Constitution 101 first. In uh, March, uh, we got a referendum about whether to continue the way we are with the Constitution and so forth. And the uh, religion came up. Only then. Uh, it was told to the people in mosques and all over the place. If you say yes to the referendum, uh, then that's with Allah. Yes is for God. No is for Christians. And uh, no is for seculars. And people who have sex in the natural square and people who are you know, totally Arabic. So I think we've got to be yes. Uh, well, all over the world, after the revolution, you used to get yes to the referendum. Maybe only in France it happened, but we had a no. Uh, but uh, but uh, that was a strong yes, because that was a, a yes for the world. Mm -hmm. That's the way to go. So, uh, uh, we got a yes for the referendum, and the British staff, uh, the British Council went ahead for no, anyway, although they wanted yes, which was very strange. Uh, so, we didn't get the constitution. Uh, we want some changes only that gave him to have some uh, more power over us and the violation started. In, uh, in March, we had the uh, virginity tests happening in Tahrir Square. Uh, so the Virgin Council took uh, the ladies uh, of Tahrir Square for the virginity tests in malls in front of all soldiers and everyone. Uh, I know that so far they don't have a reason behind this. Uh, they said they didn't want uh, people to think that they touched the women. Although this is a violation in itself. Uh, this uh, became a very big issue, but not before June, because it was of course silenced by the media and by the Virgin Council. Uh, April, we had the killing for the first time in Tangier, where we had uh, some of the soldiers of the army from the military council actually joining the protesters against the military council. So the military decided to come down and get their own kids, you know. Uh, from uh, away from the civilians who were in, in Paris Square. And this ended up in the killing of some soldiers and some civilians on the spot uh, on the 8th of April. And uh, so far, uh, most of the uh, officers who, were, who joined us are still in prison, and it's been a year and a half now that they have been inside, being tortured, and not with, uh, and we don't know where they will be. Because uh, for them, uh, this was a very big violation joining the civilians against the military. Uh, that was April. Uh, we had the, uh, a monthly violation and killing since then, uh, up till um, uh, October, the 9th of October, which targeted Christians. Uh, there was a church um, uh, in the uh, upper Egypt. Uh, this church uh, belonged uh, to Christians, of course, and it belonged to the, the church. And uh, some Muslims protested against them to get an annex or uh, an extension, and it ended up being a big problem about uh, fighting, and Christians not being able to finish the building. Uh, so uh, Christians decided that they were going to take to the streets and protest for their uh, civil rights, really, and having uh, a house of worship.
right to the constitution, you know, uh, anyone that pain uh, anyone. So uh, a lot of Muslims join them as well, and people living in civil state, like secularists and, and uh, socialists and so forth. Uh, it, it was supposed to be a very big march. Uh, from the morning, uh, the media, uh, TV, building, which is we call the factory of lies. The factory of lies started telling people that uh, there will be weapons and armed Christians marching towards us. And everybody needs to take the proper caution uh, because the marches that are coming are armed. They are not peaceful. Well, they were not peaceful because they had women and children and old people, so but they were not peaceful. Uh, this march uh, led to Christian area called Shura, which is the most populated uh, in, uh, in Cairo, and started marching towards the TV and wanting to tell the TV that they are the people of life. Uh, by the time they got to the TV building, uh, the army just started shooting at people for no specific reason, and people were also crushed under the hands. Uh, so there were things, images of camps just crushing people under them. Uh, they were being withdrawn from the mile as the person was still missing, and Nina was shot in the head, and he died. Um, before dying, uh, Nina said, I don't want to... In Egypt, we have something that, that says uh, a celebration for the martyr. So for martyrs, we should not cry. For martyrs, we should celebrate and rejoice. And before he died, he said, I don't want to be uh, placed anywhere or have my uh, party except in Capitol Square. So before taking me to my you know, um, cemetery, please take me to Capitol Square. And that's what happened after uh, the church and the prayers. Uh, we took Nina's body to Mandy Square and the mom's attested to the body of Martin. Nina lived on in, in, in a lot of people because he was not a symbol of uh, a, a person fighting for a groups right or a cops right, but actually for every Egyptian. Uh, his status on Facebook, uh, the day he died in the morning, was only the people shed and and Nina was very, very cool. And uh, this march was not supported by classes Christians, unfortunately, in Egypt. Uh, uh, they were actually blamed by Christians later on, and they were told, you know, it's, it's a social thing, and only those who took the, to the streets were actually ignorant as Christians as they were um, before. Anyway, uh, Nina continued, and we continued. Uh, the next day, uh, Nina's friends decided, because he was a revolutionary socialist, Nina's friends decided to have a dog. Uh, that's Nina, the rebellion and the soldier. That's him. And he always had like the smile. And that's the flag. Nina's flag is the most famous flag in Egypt and continues to be. Uh, this is uh, uh, up there with the Egyptian flag, with a crescent and a cross. That's the flag of the Christians and Muslims together. And under it is the red flag of Nina. And they are attached like this since uh, the 10th of October. What happens is that in every single clash and every single confrontation of state, this flag will stand in the front line, just the front line, uh, held by two people that take turns and 24 hours standing there. One of them is a Muslim, the other is a Christian, and they're two of Nina's best friends. And this flag for me is the compass, for me is the guide. So whenever I go to an area of protesting or clashes or whatever, I look for this flag and I just go and stand there. It feels safe. And for all of us, this is the symbol of continuing our world, of continuing against even Muslim rather than now, because it was not an Islamist advising. This is Nina and uh, Ahmed. The other one in front of Nina is a, is a Muslim Turk. Uh, the, the, he was killed on the 17th of December and he belonged to the Azhar, not to Muslim Brotherhood, and he was anti Muslim Brotherhood, and he was also shot in the head later on. And both of them just stand there telling us, you know, where we should be really and telling our story. Yes, we told him to be taken, but we do not talk about the topic of this year. The regime is still alive and people, I would say. It just changed face and we will do it. That's what we say in Egypt. It's just the same. We just move here. 
Finally, of the majority is what we want to talk about when we're talking about religion and state now and the rise of Islam to power in Egypt and Tunisia. We can go back to that. This is a very interesting picture that uh, is all over Egypt now since last Friday. What happened with last Friday, some of Muslim women and Saudis decided that they want to take that in the square, our place, mm -hmm. uh, just to say that they demand Sharia law. They demand that Egypt should be at least for respect. And they went in the street, and that was our response, really, this picture. It's a horrible-looking man who looks like a cloud. He can eat children alive. It is one of the Salafists uh, uh, in Alexandria, known and very hated by most of Egyptians, even Salafists themselves. Okay? Uh, uh, this man was running for one of the elections, and everything for him is a sin. And the day he failed the parliamentary elections, uh, all the jokes were about our Egyptian museum rejoicing because now the mummies and the statues have lived in peace because he was going to just knock everything out and get our history totally. Uh, but it's still out there, out there, so let's hope and give us close that this man is never going to win elections in the time. But that is our revolution. These are the investors. We continue to work against this. They cannot change what we stand for. What we stood for was not an Islamic state by all means. When we talk about religion and politics now, uh, the word political Islam comes uh, to mind all the time. So people use this word political Islam, political Islam. Uh, but what is political Islam? Uh, we usually uh, refer it to the reassertion of Islam in the public and private life, so what it appears to be in our public life. Islamist movements and parties we will discuss today are usually political organizations organized and agitate in the political sphere while deploying signs and symbols for Islamic traditions. So that's the thing. They do move with us in the public sphere, they are there. They, 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 they have their agenda, they have their speech, but they always use the word of God and they always use the Islamic tradition as a base for any discussion. Well, they did take to the problem, as we say, and they all say we bought the boxes and they love the boxes and they call it the crusade of the boxes. Uh, but we say that democracy is not in the bloody box. And we will say that maybe the only box we can associate with our revolution is a coffin box closed in one of our waters, that's all. But not the balance that they control and they play with. Because uh, even the elections, although it was the first free election after the years and years of oppression, was not that free. And it was manipulated by the uh, by it has been 22 months now, and this is in Egypt and Tunisia, have engaged actively in what we call transitional process into a big democracy that is not really happening. Uh, the parties that we will be looking at specifically today are Freedom and Justice Party, and that's the most number of the parties, so it's called Freedom and Justice, ironically, and uh, then Amnur al Salafi, which is a Southeast party. And that's in uh, Egypt as well, and that was something new that some of us uh, actually uh, started uh, being involved in politics. Uh, because before uh, they say, according to the Salafis' uh, uh, preaching or teaching, you cannot actually go against the ruler. So they never came out to protest or anything because it was against God to be against the ruler. Um, and of course, uh, we will discuss some Lanka, which is the uh, party in the uh, traditional power. So these are the uh, Islamist parties, uh, having most of the seats, whether in uh, Tunisia or in Egypt. Well, our traditional political to take democracy uh, meant that we had uh, the uh, staff, which is the military council, uh, link following the topic of Obama. Uh, many mistakes and many violations, many deaths, most things. Dance between Islamists and military, and Egyptians were lost in the middle. We, we lasted with this dance months and months and months till we ended up getting the Islamists and having the military exit safely for that new tribe. So, Egypt now, so we have an idea, Islamists in power, protesters built in Jerusalem and military prisons. No retribution at all, as all accused of killing have been acquitted. Everyone 
every single officer who was accused of killing protesters since the 25th of January till our day has been convicted of all crimes. Hence, no transitional justice. If you are speaking about transitional justice, how can we get transitional justice without contribution? Without, you know, moving, how can we move on if we are still claiming the ability? Constitution being written by a religious majority, as we are speaking, uh, military council exited the Egyptian political scene safely. Opposition of Muslim government is continuously being attacked. And we have to continue, of course, for the transition into democracy. At the end of the history of the Islamist party, together in Tunisia and Egypt, both in North and Norway, they came from, where the border revolutions, the parties were outlawed in both Egypt and Tunisia. However, they remained active in the to vary with the police force. Each of the Muslim Brotherhood were represented in Parliament uh, in several occasions, 84 and 87. Uh, and uh, of course, one of the very important things on the Muslim Brotherhood agenda or the way they, they, they work is that they have to take control of syndicates, all professional syndicates, student unions and what have So they, they gain control from the base working upward. So they have uh, syndicates and unions, especially the uh, uh, medical syndicates. And during the 90s, uh, there was security crackdown, of course, on a lot of them. A lot of them were imprisoned uh, by Mubarak. The and then by 2000 and 2005, we started seeing Mubarak being a bit, you know, allowing them a bit of space and to be a bit of opposition. So I think appeared as an opposition from the parliament. Ananda actually has been known for as Tijan uh, Islami. And that was before 89. Uh, 89 when they were exiled, most of them, uh, like the Nali. Uh, they were uh, strong political players during the 1980s, but Tunisia differs from Egypt in one important matter is that Tunisia is very strong uh, in its socialist uh, political uh, base. Uh, so we have a strong socialist uh, parties and strong opposition from the war. Egypt, uh, all the opposition during the time of Mubarak and the was actually in the fight. We did not have any strong opposition, and that's why maybe we had obstacles and problems following the government of Mubarak, because there was no one there. You know, the opposition is very fragile, the opposition has always worked with the regime anyway. We did not know who to trust by what, so at the end, the end of the staff. Uh, before the 2011 uprising, the Muslim Brotherhood and Nanda focused mainly on political rights. Because they were oppressed or repressed, uh, they were working towards uh, their political rights. So, their rights to be involved in the political, uh, on the political world. Of course, it has changed now because they are uh, politics. Okay. When it comes to pluralism, this is a very important issue that we are discussing in Egypt and Tunisia. Islam states that political pluralism in the Islamic state exists within the supremacy of Sharia. Uh, this is very dangerous because this means that any party different from the other version of Islam can actually uh, be restricted and can be dissolved as well. Uh, because uh, Sharia constitutes public order of Islamic state, no one can challenge. Uh, you cannot challenge the words of God. And that's the big danger when religion is in politics, because the politics is full of just mistakes and trial and error. But how can you say the same about the thought and about the words of God? So it's actually bringing God into the scheming of things, uh, bringing the truth into the lies. Uh, and that's uh, where everything is, you know, going to stray in Egypt, I guess. Um, thinking now there is no word about the word of God, and if we are the word of God, then that's it. We are the state and we are the word of God. And I mean, that's just what we are just born with this idea. Nakba uh, has asserted that secular parties can exist in an Islamic state, so that's the Tunisian thing on things. In practice, it's not the case. So they always try to say, well, no, we want to be secular. We can be secular in Tunisia. And that's the difference between Tunisia and Egypt, or Islamists in both countries. Islamists in Tunisia use the word secular, and they're okay about using it, but they don't define it really. Uh, Islamists in Egypt cannot say the word secular, and the word secular is you know, a bomb, which is the known So, however, although a number says that uh, secular parties can exist in Islam, state is not real, because they can to criminalize uh, certain forms of expression. And 
under the protection of religious sanctity. So it's okay for you to be there, but don't come near religion. So what's the point of being there? So it's just like, uh, again, always playing with words, always having double standards of things. And more of Salafi, which is the other uh, Salafi, which is the other uh, party that came second in parliamentary elections, to the surprise of all Egyptians, really. You only have one million Salafis in, in Egypt, uh, altogether up to 88 million people, and they are uh, the most uh, radical uh, of Islamists. Uh, but they knew how to speak to the poor. And uh, funnily enough, uh, Al Nur means the light. And uh, in Egypt, uh, uh, the Virgin Mary is called Mother of the Light, Omni Nur. And uh, in Upper Egypt, where it is uh, mainly educated by Christians, and not a lot of them are educated, uh, Al Nur uh, Salafi was going around in the picture of the Madonna, picture of the Virgin Mary, asking people to go to Al Nur. Uh, so I had uh, people calling him saying, ah, I'm going to go to Al Nur, it's a nice Christian uh, party. Actually, it is a radical Salafi party, and that was just one of the fun things we had during the election. Uh, they flourished, I think, uh, Al Nur and, uh, and the Muslim Brother, uh, following the law, uh, but also uh, we have to speak about people who are independent, maybe from party, uh, but they are trying to find a place so far. Egyptian Salafists, just to know who they are, uh, and former violent jihadists. So we have the jihadist movement, which is called Kamat Ismailia. Uh, we had them in the 80s and the 90s, where they were trying to uh, rule uh, uh, with the word of God, which means they go to areas for specific, for instance, and if they don't find God in the area, people would be beaten up or killed or whatever. So to find God, uh, you need to have daily women, you need to have men and women not mixing, you need to have people not drinking, all these things. If you find that God is not in the place, uh, you crack them down. Uh, Tunisian Salafists uh, are also very visible in public life, but they are not in political parties or in the elections like what happened in Egypt. So you hear about them from big bands uh, against uh, media, against art, against whatever. So they just come to the streets and you hear about their uh, violations. But so far we have not seen them in elections, unlike the Muslim Salafis. But is it all Islamia? Islamia means Islamia. Is it all Islam in Egypt? No. We have secular, liberal, socialist parties also emerging, okay? And they attracted a lot of the youth of the revolution and participated in the election, but were defeated by Islamists, of course. However, they continue to organize themselves as we speak now, but we face a very big obstacle, the biggest of all. We are competing with the word of God. The plants compete with God. And if God belongs to the Muslim brotherhood, then we are not able to text. Religion, Sharia, and state. Civil state, that's also another fun word in, uh, in our world. Islamists have argued that the conception of Sharia as state law is reconcilable with constitutional democratic state. They say civil state is an Islamic preference, not a religious state. So, civil state with Islamic preference. How does this work? We don't know, but they think it works. So, as long as they can work it, that's the distinction made by many Islamists between theocratic states and Islamic civil state fails to address fears expressed by seculars, liberals, non Muslims, and human rights communities, of course. In Tunisia, a number is pressed ready to let its doctrine benefit from modern human achievements through Ishtihad. So, Ishtihad is a very important word as well, which means independent juristic reasoning. So, we have Sharia, fixed laws. And then we have independent juristic reasoning, which allows for some space. So they think this is positive because I'm going to allow for some space of human achievement, of modern human rights laws, you know, to be involved in this and so forth. However, the, the, both of them, the Freedom and Justice Party and not that, say very few rulings in Sharia are fixed and are not invincible to change. Other rules are derived through Ishtihad, guided by general rules of Sharia. So even Ishtihad is guided by general rules of Sharia. The problem with this approach is that many of the Sharia fixed laws are not compatible with basic human rights at all. 
Uh, so if we speak about gender equality, for instance, if we speak about uh, sentences to crime uh, and many other aspects, all three things really uh, are not present in the, in the Sharia. In addition, it should have free space for human reasoning and subjectivity and outcomes are governed by the values of those asked to interpret Sharia. But this is important. Who interprets Sharia? So, if you're going to say it's going to be the Supreme Constitutional Court, for instance, or whoever, who interprets Sharia? And if they interpret Sharia according to what? It will be according to values, it will be subjective, and then we fall under the maybe uh, the control of the majority again. Because if it's the majority interpreting Sharia, then everything will be based on Muslim rather than take on Sharia. So there is no basis for it coming from law enforcement. Salafism, on the other hand, because we keep on saying Salafism, 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 they have refers to Islam's trend that aims to purify Islam. It brings it to the roots of all the origins or the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. That was what was called uh, Salafism. Now it is a bit different. Now the term usually refers to those influenced by Saudi Arabian Wahhabism. So it is more of an important type of Islam to Egypt because it is not the Egyptian Islam or the way Egypt knows its Islam. It is more of the Saudi Arabian Islam, which is more strict and literal interpretations of the Quran. Since the 1970s, the problem is that the Muslim Brotherhood itself has been under the strong influence of the new emerging Salafis coming from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, so they have been. Uh, they usually try to market themselves as moderate, uh, but the problem is you can't do that if you have strong Salafist presence inside of you and there is always a big fight who to flirt with, should we flirt with the public or flirt with our own Salafists inside of the Sun Brotherhood. So uh, I don't think they managed to get away with the lies. Uh, civil with Islam presence, because we know that and we do that in the in Egypt. Well, that's the five things they do. Democratic institutions under this model are to protect the teachings of Islam. So I democratically elect an institution to protect Islam, that's one, but it's democratic because it's elected, so we know what to do today. Constitution based on Sharia principles. Shura, which means uh, consultation, is performed through an elected parliament. So that's democracy. Parliament legislates in accordance to Sharia principles. Constitutional court oversees compatibility of laws with Sharia. So that's a civil state. Al Nur Salafi Party agrees with the, uh, the Freedom and Justice Party on the Islamic version of democracy. It looks nice, the fact that I think. Yeah. And of course, we know by Sharia, but it uses the term civil state. So they only disagree. Don't call this civil state, not because it's not a civil state, but we use the word civil state. I'm also going to say that that's a civil state. And it's like, you don't understand the legal purpose for the moment. Al Nahda, on the other hand, is different from Muslim Brotherhood of Islam. Because, as I said, they don't like to explicitly talk about Sharia or say that Sharia is involved in any way. They use the word secularism or refinement, unlike Muslim Brotherhood that and Salafism are rejected. Ananda's leader, Rashid al Mushi, argued that Islam is reconcilable with procedural secularism. So he would call what happens there as procedural secularism, under which constitution protects religious, religious freedom and freedom of expression, and state refrains from intervening in the religious way of life of citizens. That seems like heaven to us when we get there, but that doesn't happen. And they are threatened down with anyone. Is Islam in this context really reconcilable with procedural secularism? Well, no. We have the religious neutrality of states and Islam being the supreme source of law. So, how does it go together? So far, I don't know, but they are very advanced, so they get these things well and don't get it somewhere ahead of us. When it comes to Sharia and New Party, there is a lot of reason for concern. Why? Because we see Sharia happening in Egypt out of the state of law. So, for instance, uh, there was a, a, a naughty Christian man, I don't know how naughty he was, but he was not a very good man, did something wrong 
in the upper Egypt, so I was then decided to, you know, have Sharia in his own hands and just chop off his ears. So he chopped off his ear as a Sharia boy, and then the weirdest thing happened. Uh, we all came to the street saying, now what's going to happen? Uh, where is the law of the state? And where is our rights to this? And this person should be tried and sent to prison and so forth. You find the Christian saying, it's okay, I forgive him. And uh, saying, it's okay, I forgive him, in what we call uh, an Arab uh, council, which is uh, uh, people having tea together, and just discussing matters, and giving you about some money, you know, I'm going to give you, or whatever land, or what have you. The Christian decided, okay, I'm going to let this go. What about our rights? So, what about the state's rights here? that this man actually chopped an ear of someone else in the name of Sharia and this is against the Egyptian law. Nothing happened. Which tells us a lot about the fear people have from Salafi taking matters in their own hands, really, and enforcing a, a law that is not a law. Muslim Brotherhood tried to play on this, as you say, they speak of Sharia and try to flirt with Salafis because they are worried and scared of Salafis. They're not very scared of us, Unfortunately, but they are more worried about Salafis that they are still in a tight position. Allah has postponed this, said that it would wait until you know, the movement is better established, whether socially or politically, and then we start talking about Sharia, but it's not the time now to speak Sharia in Tunisia. Now we have 22 months in power. Egyptian Islamists more taken up with securing places in the virtual regime, every single thing. We make the joke in Egypt that they took everything, including our underwear as well. Everything they have in power. And, and, and really, you know, quickly, quickly they spread them and, and took it all. So that's what is interesting for them now. For 22 months they've been doing nothing else. But have they been solving anything or offering solutions? Nothing. Islam has dominated the Constitution Assembly now, and they refuse to give international human rights any privilege status in the Constitution, saying that these are Western human rights. But us Easterners or Egyptians have different human rights because we are different human rights altogether. Uh, not very obvious as well what happened with the military. The president asserts his power over military or not, we don't know, but what we see in Egypt and the report daily is that there is a penetration of Muslim Brotherhood in the military now, but it is not very subtle and it is not very smooth. So they're not going to take over smoothly because there is resistance inside the military itself. Uh, but uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, the current one that we have now, comes from uh, a family with Salafist and Muslim Brotherhood as well. Uh, so we see kind of from work that we can take in the country. Uh, we see no reform and we see safe exit for those of you still living in education. President Morsi broke his promise. He actually said that when I come to power, I will restructure the Constitutional Assembly so it would uh, uh, show the diversity of all Egyptians. So, have the women and the cops and people from Sinai and Muslims and uh, uh, artists and internet and everyone. Unfortunately, this will not happen. So, we have 90%. Uh, not only people out of the hundred belonging to Islamists, uh, whether ideology or parties or what have you, and uh, you don't have women in the Constitution Assembly, or the women who have the Constitution Assembly belong to the Islamist parties, and they themselves are so happy to be oppressed. So they are, you know, they are even worse of an enemy to us than men when it comes to uh, feminists. So then we got the very, very interesting. Alamont uh, accusation, defaming religion. Well, a lot of people I know have been accused of defaming religion. Defaming religion happens if you speak against uh, a prophet, or if you just say your opinion, or if you share a video, or actually if you just say a story and miss out on a specific detail. So um, uh, a lot have been accused. Of course, most of those accused are Christians and atheists. Uh, but we have uh, two uh, Muslims uh, tried for uh, uh, defaming uh, religion. Um, we had an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old taken for defaming religion. Uh, that happened in uh, Israel. They come from uh, a, a slum area, really. They can't be the right uh, They didn't go to school or anything. They play the garbage. And uh, they found uh, two pages of Quran. I don't know how they found it. 
for my neighbor walking around with the two patients, from the Quran, close to the mosque, and someone behind the family saw the two patients of the Quran, said that the mother would be on this bad boys and whatever. So instead of saying bad boys, this is for on you can do all this, no, I'm going to actually take you to the station. And uh, being interrogated for the faith religion when you are 8 and 10 and you have no idea what religion is anyway, and you don't even care about God at that point because you from the garbage. So, uh, uh, here you go. And uh, they were interrogated for five hours and actually uh, uh, left uh, three nights in the police station before the president himself had to interfere and say, no, that is okay, then let me. So we needed the interference of the president to get two children out of uh, uh, jail. A friend of mine, uh, Albert, uh, is, um, he's an outspoken atheist uh, from a Christian um, uh, background. Uh, is, uh, it's one of the most famous cases of defending religion at the, at the moment because he shared the, the video that uh, everyone shared last month. The video that, about uh, the Prophet Muhammad that uh, you know, led to the killing of the American ambassador in Libya and led to many violence all over the world. Uh, he shared this video and uh, he was beaten up bad in the streets and taken to the police station. And in the police station, he was interrogated first by a, a Christian police officer. We didn't like him very much because he was atheist, so we took him to the criminals uh, there, or people waiting uh, for uh, trials and so forth, and asked them to finish him. Uh, so he was beaten hard by those uh, in the station, and uh, his neck was actually opened and he was nearly killed. Uh, and he's standing trial at the moment, and he's facing something like five years in prison. We're sharing the video and for being a household and detailing the video. Um, tough stances against media, increasing number of lawsuits uh, against journalists, charges of defaming the president. So we have defaming religion and God, and we have defaming the president. And uh, we have a very interesting case where a guy uh, is sentenced to seven years. Uh, he got three for defaming religion, uh, two for defaming the president, and one for defaming the attorney general. So uh, he got a cocktail of seven years uh, for all the things there is. Uh, on the other hand, they do discriminate, they do tolerate uh, the hate speech uh, on Saudi media. So we have the uh, channels, uh, uh, private religious uh, channels, where they are talking about Christians and being crusaders, and we need to go and finish them, and, uh, and women need to stay home and be burned to death, and uh, it's okay to marry a child of 11 year old or even make it 10, and all these things are tolerated. Uh, and they can't tolerate people just speaking against the uh, They use their power now to control appointment of leaders of public newspapers. So now, in some rather than appoints the newspaper leaders as well. We were offered, maybe not offered, maybe we paid for it, I don't know, the IMF uh, loan uh, recently. Uh, the IMF loan uh, came up uh, several times, uh, and uh, before the Muslim Brothers were in power, it was a sin to speak about such uh, loan, uh, because it's, uh, according to Sharia, it, it, it is uh, simple. And then all of a sudden, uh, we find that the IMF loan uh, suddenly is not a sin anymore. And uh, in the mosques, uh, they are actually speaking about how great the IMF loan is, and how great it will help the Egyptians. Uh, so it's not a uh, Gender issues, family law, of course. Uh, um, the only good thing that we, uh, as uh, women, uh, actually we happened in Egypt the, uh, in the past uh, 30 years was the family law. Uh, a law that protects the women's rights in a way to their children, to their houses, and so forth. Uh, but, uh, this is viewed uh, as against Sharia by Islamists, and it's viewed against Sharia by female Islamists in particular, who are working against this. So you'll find the female leaders of Muslim Brotherhood uh, trying to, uh, you know, kill that law. And I'm just saying this is not possible because men have rights. So it is the females working for men's rights now in Egypt uh, in the Muslim Brotherhood uh, era. Uh, rights of religious minorities and increased attacks on houses of worship by Salafis and this is tolerated by Muslim Brotherhood. 
When we say religious minorities in Egypt, the biggest religious minority, which is very difficult to say, is a minority are Copts, Christians. Uh, we're around 13 million. So if we are 13 million, it's very difficult to call us a minority because we, in number, we're much bigger than many countries altogether. So, uh, uh, so anyway, that's the biggest minority. And uh, uh, we are more tolerated by Muslim brotherhood than Salafis than the tolerance of Shia, Muslims, for instance, Baha'is, and uh, uh, Sufis. So other types of Islam are less tolerated by Muslim brotherhood Sufis than Christianity, actually. And they are more oppressed. So they said Christians are allowed to build, to build their houses of worship, but Shia and uh, Sufis are not. And uh, the problem with Sufis is that uh, Sufis have uh, shrines, and shrines are against the Sunni scriptures and the Salafi scriptures, so shrines are a big problem for them as well. And it would be one of the first things to go if they decide now to just get rid of our monuments. Another, Tunisia, on the other hand, unlike Egyptian counterparts, they've chosen to defer controversial political issues at the moment. And they are just attempting to dominate the public service as well as restricting media freedom and gender equality. So that's the thing. But the good thing about Tunisia is that they have a very strong feminist movement in Tunisia. So they have people standing up to this. And uh, a, a, a very strong left as well. Uh, so uh, some kids are not just, uh, at the moment, they did not take over yet. There are fears, but there is strong resistance still uh, on the Tunisian ground. Uh, the party has been criticized for being too lenient with hardcore Salafis who have committed violence against intellectuals and artistic activities. Persecution of journalists happened in Tunisia as well uh, over the last few months, but gave rise to the doubt, you know, to doubt about commitment to freedom of expression. And they say secularism can exist under Islam, and then they say there is no commitment to freedom of expression. They propose criminalizing offenses against sanctity of Islam in the future constitution. So the constitution would actually uh, say that it is a crime that you offend the court in sanctity of Islam. But what are the sanctities of Islam? Also, faith. So, anything. Well, we can't conclude on this. There is an ongoing battle for freedom and rights. But the thing that we need to read from some is that this has not been an Islamist movement. Okay? This has been a movement for liberty and freedom. And because it's a movement for liberty and freedom, it doesn't mean that Muslims coming, Islam's coming to power is going to shut us up in the country. We believe this is a cleansing process. Uh, and they are there in the cleansing uh, process, but uh, are not there to stay. Um, they cannot stay because that's not what people die for to, to begin with. They cannot stay because you have people on the ground working for social justice. But what is important is that we have to start taking the debate the or the, the, the dialogue away from religion and away from talking God to talking social justice and rights of people. Those who elected Muslim brotherhood, the first time in parliament, so if you look at results, for instance, you see that around 20 million Egyptians gave their votes to Muslim Brotherhood and Salafis in the parliament. But then when you came to presidential elections, the first round, uh, mostly uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, with the Salafis and everyone, they got 4 million votes. So that's going down from 20 to 4 million. It was only in the second round, so the uh, did we get 13 million, and that's because we could not give a credit of our votes. So we had people giving more seed, thinking one is better than the other, but they were arguing, uh, is it better to go with cancer, die with cancer, or die in an accident? I don't know, I can't. I don't know. So, so some people argue that they are with mostly locally and a role in the military life. Uh, personally, I was part of a campaign uh, that would put it, uh, all this, and said from the beginning, before, before we even got to Shabir Morsi, they said, we said, we're not playing this game. Uh, people are continuing uh, to resist, and, and if we're going to just have to touch on women and women's rights, I'm not worried about women's rights in Egypt or in Tunisia at the moment, although there is a very uh, strong uh, maybe, uh, media showing 
So I'm showing that uh, women might need to be attacked a lot in the future. But on the other hand, I see very strong women all the time, all around the industry, more involved in politics now. Uh, of course, uh, they are not very obvious, and they, they, they don't appear a lot in the media because we also have a much in society. Uh, that, uh, men want to control everything, but it's not only about Islamists. This happens also in liberal and, uh, and socialist parties as well. Uh, that uh, you have a panel, for instance, uh, and you have a lot of female leaders, uh, and people can speak about stuff, and you find that it's only five men, and if they are lucky, they will ask a woman to be present on the panel, for instance. Uh, also with elections, the same thing. Uh, out of a list of ten, for every ten, it said you must have one woman out of the ten. But that was Egypt. To me, they did it better. It, it went for a 50-50, which means a list to go for a 50-50. And hopefully we do this in the upcoming elections in Egypt and we we'll push for it. Um, uh, there was one time a clash uh, with uh, the military council in front of the uh, defense uh, ministry, and it was a very good one. Uh, that ended up in another death. Uh, but I'll never forget this lady who is uh, a celebrity, and she was very in the cloud, so she was totally covered from head to toe in black. But she had white sneakers and she had a glove. Uh, and uh, when we go to uh, such protests uh, with the glove, it's because we are what she called catchers. Catchers of the bonds, catchers. So she was a catcher. And uh, her goal was to catch all the tear gas bombs thrown and throw back, you know, at uh, the state. In being totally dressed from head to toe. Uh, and she was a very good woman, and I was watching her and really, really impressed. Uh, this, is, this is the woman who chose to cover up, this is the woman who chose to fight for her rights. So that is the thing that we want to uh, push forward for. We don't want people. Like, like if I am not veiled myself or I'm Christian or whatever, I don't want to push that everyone is liberal or everyone uh, should not be veiled or should not follow their uh, scripture or what have you. No, they have the freedom and the right to do so. Just like I have the freedom and the right to do and, and dress the way I please, for instance, and be. Uh, so I'm not worried about women at the moment. They are fighting hard for their rights. And minorities are fighting hard for their rights. Uh, of course, it doesn't help with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, being in power, but every day we see Muslim Brotherhood uh, the way, you know, that maybe it's a blessing that we see them. Uh, they were not allowed to exist, and they were not allowed to practice politics, and they were banned. And when they were banned, they were wanted, and people were curious about them, because they always said it's now not the solution. So people were curious, if they show me the solution, they need to let the solution. And now that they own everything, including our bodies and everything. Now we want to see what they're going to do about it. And I think their popularity is falling, and uh, that's why we are not uh, we are not very worried about it. Uh, I know we don't have time. Uh, I just want to say Libya surprised us a very nice surprise that uh, Islamists did not win the elections on the contrary. I thought actually Libya had less of a chance than Egypt, but obviously there is strong resilience and resistance in Libya. They, they, they are still there. Uh, the Islamists in Libya are still fighting hard, but uh, we, are, we are hopeful that this will not be the case. Syria is a totally different story now because uh, in, in the beginning, everyone uh, supported uh, Syria, supported the, the, the opposition, the protests, and everything. But with the violations happening daily, on a daily basis, and with religion coming into play in this part now, not after things have settled, it makes it very difficult to analyze where Syria is going and who exactly are the players at the, at, at the moment. Uh, but we hope that they learn from us when it comes to things that we don't go and die and then hand it over to Islamists, just like what happened in Iran, and hopefully not what will happen Anyway, thank you, I'm, so, I'm sorry that I, I took a long time.